I just got done spending the day in Krakow, Poland to see what the Jewish victims of the Nazis left behind. As an American, one of the things that comes across as exotic about Poland is the fact that the country is made up of its own people. Unless you've grown up in a homogeneous society like that, it's difficult to imagine. But what's more difficult to imagine, after spending some time here in Poland, is the fact that this place was once a very diverse part of Europe, famous for accommodating outsiders and immigrants. Most notably, were the Jewish people who actually lived here for hundreds of years. As I've previously pointed out, the tragedies of war left many literally visible scars on Poland. But in this case, the case of Jewish Poles, these wounds are not so obvious, and that for many people, it is simply hard to see something which has completely vanished. With the most powerful evidence of a murdered society, being ash mixed with dirt in the former Nazi concentration camp, I wanted to explore to see what other remnants I might find, what might be left behind, so I headed to Kraków's Kazimierz and Podgórze regions to see what was left. So I'm standing on the grounds of Kraków Płaszów, a former concentration camp, where thousands of Jewish citizens died at the hands of the Nazis. So these were the grounds of the actual camp, and on that hill beyond me uh, was a Jewish cemetery where the Nazis actually removed headstones which they later used to pave the roads which led prisoners to this camp. Disgusting, despicable, and grotesque. What else could you really say? And this is how a cemetery which was vandalized by Nazis looks today in 2015. So these are some of the original foundations of buildings that were used by Nazis in the camp. And uh, if you stand here and look back to the memorial, it gives you a scale for just how big this camp truly was. Now you may remember a shot in Schindler's List where there was a road paved by Jewish headstones. Well. So to the best of my knowledge, there are only two fragments remaining of the former ghetto wall here in Kraków Podgórze. And uh, this is one, it looks pretty low, but if you were to look at the other side of the, the wall, it's, it's actually quite high. And uh, it's really disturbing how it's connected to an active school and there's kind of a playground set up and children just run around here and exist, not even realizing that this wall was meant to look like Jewish headstones to demoralize and uh, disillusion prisoners during the Second World War. And here behind me is the other remaining fragment of the ghetto wall. Behind me is the iconic Schindler's factory. It was said to be a sanctuary for many people who would have otherwise perished in the concentration camps. So I'm standing in a place where Jewish prisoners were rounded up to be transported to Auschwitz and other extermination camps. And right behind me is a pharmacy which was operated by a Polish hero. And what strikes me about that 
is in a place where people were being given so much death. It was a place where one man wanted to give care. This synagogue was founded in the 1600s, and it's crazy if you stop to think that in that time span until the Second World War, this was a thriving community. Beyond this wall is a cemetery, right in the center of Kazimierz. And what a lot of people don't realize is that beneath the surface of this road are also Jewish graves. Mm -hmm. 